What's up guys, Matoya here back with another video and today I will be doing a review on my BMW F33 428i. Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe, put that bell notification on so you guys get notified every time I upload another video. So I wanted to do a review for you guys for a couple of reasons. I had a couple of you guys ask me to do a review Maybe you guys are thinking about buying a 428i and you want me to do a review on high like mine. And the second reason why I wanted to do this review is because, you know, I've owned this car for about about two years now. And I feel like I have a good feel for the car and I have some likes, some dislikes. So at this point, I just wanted to share all that information. So this review will consist of a few things. Um, I want to get a good look on the outside of the car, you know, exterior wise, likes, dislikes. Then we're going to go to the interior. And then after the interior, I'll put a, a camera inside the car and then we'll go for a drive. All right, guys. So starting at the front of the vehicle, my BMW has what's called an M Sport package. And what that means is that when you get the M Sport package, you get the front bumper, back bumper, and some side skirts. The front bumper just looks a lot more aggressive, as you can see, with uh, the curves. Just makes it look super aggressive. I also wanted to mention BMW's headlights. I love the halos. I think it gives the car a super aggressive look, especially at night when they are turned on. I really enjoy the hood as well. As you can see, it has nice aggressive lines coming towards the front of the car, which make it look super good. If you decide to get a 428i, I definitely recommend getting the M Sport package. Um, it'll have the side skirts, M Sport. Let's go around to the rear bumper. The rear bumper is also M Sport. Now, obviously, I did change the way the exhaust and the diffuser is, but even without the diffuser change, the, the rear bumper is very aggressive. That M Sport bumper has these little, these little angles right here on the side. And compared to a regular non M Sport bumper, um, it just looks a whole lot better, a whole lot more aggressive. So I really like that. Yes, I do have an F33, which means that this car is a convertible. I really like how BMW does the hard top convertible. Um, I'm not a fan of the cloth top convertibles. I just think that when they get old, they get all messed up and they don't look clean. But the fact that BMW offers a hard top option for a convertible, uh, you really can't beat it. I mean, it looks like, almost looks like a 420 AI coupe. Um, but then you hit that button and then the top drops so let me go ahead and show you guys this trunk and honestly there's not a whole lot of trunk space in a convertible um that's just the compromise you're gonna have to make so here's the trunk in order to drop the top this partition has to be down so that's how much trunk space you would have with the top down so when the top comes down it literally sits on top of this so whatever is under here that's the only trunk space you have when the top's down. In other words, if you're going to do groceries, you better take another car. And now I wanted to take this time to go over some things that I'm not too hot about on the exterior. These brake calipers. So obviously, if you have a sports car, you want to get a nice big brake caliper, um, especially if you have some wheels that show off your brake calipers and your rotors. You want a nice big brake caliper to show off and the regular bmw brake caliper just is not that big um so i feel like when i do paint it in the future just painting it is it's kind of a drawing attention to it but it's drawing attention to a little caliper so i don't know how i feel how i will feel about that but um we'll see how it turns out when i do and i already spoke a little bit about it but another thing that i wasn't a huge fan of um with buying the 428i was having both exhaust pipes on one side so obviously that's why I made my dual exhaust, one on each side, but stock just came two on one side and I just did not like that. That pretty much wraps up my um, dislikes for the exterior. There's not a whole lot. I mean, the outside of the car looks great. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into the inside and see what the inside's talking about. All right, so moving into the interior. As you can see, as soon as you open the door, it has this really nice M badge. Once again, the M package badge. So you'll get that if you have the M package on your car. So starting out in the car, I'll start with the steering wheel. So as you can see, this is a really nice steering wheel. Um, this is the M Sport steering wheel. It's a little different than if you just get the regular steering wheel. It has these little notches right here. So that way while you're driving, uh, it's real beefy right here. Give you something, 
something some more grip i want to say has some nice paddle shifters as you can see that's to shift down that's to shift up overall just a really really nice steering wheel i love the way it looks Whew. i'm sorry guys i had to turn the car on put the ac on because it's super hot out here let's continue but not only is the red interior super nice but just the seats i'm in love with you know they have all these lines it's very sporty the stitching is really really nice and these little side things right here kind of hug you while you're driving so it kind of reminds me of like a racing seat you know while you're taking curves these little side things keep you in place so you're not sliding all over the place it also has this adjustable lever down here so you can pull this out if you'd like or push it in so so next we have our gauges and our clusters as you can see it's very clean i love that it has an accent of red you know my interior is red so matches the interior perfectly but very simple you have your gas you have your miles per hour rpms right there and then you have um, the temperature of the car right there down here in this little mini cluster it's kind of cool right now i have it um under miles per hour so however fast i'm going it'll show right there uh i had to code that in though it did not come like that and you can just scroll through them you have your calendar you have nothing shown the clock you know how many more miles you have until your gas tank is empty how many miles per gallon i'm getting um that will bring that brings up another point but we'll talk about that a little later about the miles per gallon when we go on the drive. I really like the way this looks. It's just very clean to me. And I think they did a good job with uh, with how they did that. One thing I did not like about this car when I bought it is that it did not come with the Bluetooth audio. It came with the Bluetooth telephone so you could call people, you could receive calls through your, um, through your car, but it didn't come with the, uh, the audio for Bluetooth. So I had to code that in but it did not come like that so that was one of my dislikes about this car radio up top and then you have your ac and um, temperature controls right underneath that this one came with heated seats you can heat up your seat and you can also heat up the passenger seat i thought that was really cool um, i think it's really cool in the bmw how you can set one side of the vehicle to a certain temperature and then set the passenger side to a completely different temperature so if i'm riding with my girl and she gets cold just turn hers up a little bit and i can maintain the coolness over here right here you got some cup holders now i wasn't a fan of this it's kind of dirty in there ignore that but i wasn't a fan of this when i first bought this vehicle um i didn't really like how you had to remove this and then the cup holders are right there but it's kind of grown on me you know when you're not using your cup holders you can just cover it up and i think it just makes it look cleaner because if this wasn't here you would just always see the cup holders right there and then honestly that would kind of bother me so another thing that i love about this car is that it comes equipped with not only a rear view camera when you're reversing but it also has sensors so it has sensors in the back and the front so it makes it really convenient when you're maybe parking and someone walks out behind you it'll tell you it not only will show you it'll tell you your car will make a beeping noise um, and it will beep faster and faster depending on how close the object is so to activate the sensors and or um, the rear view camera all you're going to do is press this p button right here and as you can see the heads up display it switches and that's showing you the sensor area so this little light gray area that's where your sensors that's how far out they reach and as you can see on this side there's some in the front and in the back so if you want to switch to your rear view camera all you do is you're going to click this middle console button right here and then boom rear view camera right there so moving on down to this little guy down here this is probably one of my favorite buttons in this car um yes this is the the convertible button this is to drop the top if you will you hold this sucker down and then my car starts transforming like it's optimus prime also get these little storage areas on the side door just like most cars i got my little i got my mask for the corona and i also got my little bmw umbrella in here and it does come with like this little i want to say it's like a little cup holder i usually put like water bottles right there but it also has one on the other side as well so i think we've covered the front pretty well um now i want to talk about the back seat um before i go over the back seat i'm not a huge fan of the back seat i'm rarely back there obviously because i rarely have anyone drive my car but when i do have friends family members sit back there they uh they often do tell me that um it is uncomfortable the seats kind of sit straight up and down um and you can't adjust them so let's just go back there so y'all can see all right so this is the back seat area um don't get me wrong it's really nice but like i said it's just not that spacious back here um, let me go ahead and as you can see 
I'm a short guy. I don't know if it's just the way I drive or or what, but I'm only 5'6", and the fact that my knees are like right there, um, it makes it very difficult to have like taller friends back here. It's just not a lot of room, as you can see. Right here, you got a couple of cup holders. I think that's pretty cool too. Once again, if you don't want your cup holder showing, just push those down and give it a nice clean look. And this is just a little way to access your trunk right here. Last thing I want to mention in this car is that the stereo system is awesome. I don't even think this car has the upgraded stereo system, but you can get an upgraded stereo system. The one I have in this car, I be bumping. Oh God. So this car also comes equipped with what's called ambient lighting. Um, I think it's awesome. It makes the car look really, really, you know, luxurious at night. What happens is that on the side panels right here, underneath here, it'll glow a certain color. Same with um, up top next to your lights and then uh, in the back as well. So another thing that I thought was worth mentioning, um, it does happen to be another one of my dislikes with the car, is that it has like some heavy, heavy door. It's just inconvenient. Maybe when you're like on a hill, like you try to open your door and it's just constantly closing because the door's so heavy, gravity's just pulling it back. And then also when you have passengers, man, like they got out the car and they think it's, you know, some Honda Civic door that's all light and then they try to slam it and then they end up slamming it. Anyway, with that being said, I think that wraps up everything in the interior. So now let's go for a drive and then I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the performance and uh, what to expect there. Oh, my camera's gonna be jiggly. <laughs> so I do apologize in advance if my camera is kind of shaking. This road is not the best, but right off the bat, one thing I do want to mention is that, you know, if you're a speed chaser and you want like the fastest BMW, do not get a 428i. Um, 28i's in general, you know, like the 228i, 328i, 428, so on and so forth. If you want a faster BMW, go with a 435i or even a M4. So now that we're on the subject of like horsepower and whatnot, don't get me wrong, the 428i is quick. This 428i has some get up to it. You know, if I, if I press the gas, this car will go. Um, but it's just not as fast as a 435 or even an M4. So let me show you guys real quick. This car is the best on gas out of its colleagues, out of the 435, M4. Right now I'm getting about 21 miles per gallon, which isn't terrible for a sports car at all. Definitely would recommend this car as like a daily driver. Um, it's perfect for that. Like I said, it has enough power to, you know, zoom by somebody if you want to, but at the same time, if you're driving it back and forth to work, it's not gonna guzzle your gas. So one thing I did wanna talk about this car is that it drives super smooth. This car's suspension is really good. Even if you go over bumps, it's not too harsh. Uh, it's very, very smooth and it feels very planted. BMW is a luxury car and it definitely drives like a luxury car. As far as changing the modes, like sports mode, uh, comfort mode, all that, I think it's really cool. You do feel a big difference when you change the mode. Um, comfort and eco, obviously, you're not gonna have a lot of throttle response, but as soon as you put it in sport, sport plus, you definitely have a lot more throttle response. And not only do you have more throttle response, but in sport and sport plus, the steering wheel gets a little heavier, um, if you know what I mean, a little more stiff. So that way when you are taking curves, uh, it's way easier and you don't you know oversteer or anything like that. Another thing about this car, BMWs in general, um, is that they, had, they did a good job with blocking out the outside noise. Me personally, every time I'm driving, um, especially like on the highway and stuff, there's not a lot of highway noise, not a lot of like, you know what I'm talking about, like that extra noise you get with driving. You know, the inside of your cabin always stays pretty quiet. So another thing that I'm not a huge fan of in this car is, um, we kind of spoke about it earlier with the small brake calipers. Well, obviously if you have small brake calipers, your brakes aren't gonna be that good. So stock on this car, the brakes aren't that good. And the fact that this car is so heavy, um, it just doesn't have the, the greatest of brakes, you know, obviously, obviously they work, you know what I'm saying? But they're not as good as they could be. Let's one more time right here. Yes. 
All right, guys, that wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and put that bell notification on so you get notified every time I upload another video. Once again, my name is Antonio Matwire. I love you guys. Stay safe. Peace. Are we gonna play now? Ready for the show? I'm about to take down. You already know. Get the fuck out of my face now. Yeah, you gotta go. Man, I'm on the chase now.